to represent the U.S. in the Collins Cup, it confirms almost to myself that I'm up there in the best athletes. This is the first ever Collins Cup. All the greatest athletes are here. Team Europe. Team Internationals. Team US. For the first time in history, the road to the Collins Cup starts here. Whatever I do, I want to be successful at it. I don't want to be mediocre at what I do in my life because I have one life, one main thing I'm going to try to be good at in this life, and so I want to be excellent at it. And that became triathlon for me. I love just kind of pushing my limits. It just makes you feel alive. Being connected to nature, that's what keeps me going. I love endurance sports and I fell in love with just endurance sports and triathlon when I was younger, thanks to my dad. While growing up, my dad always did you know, Ironmans and brought us to all those races. So triathlon was always around. I mean, having my dad around was nice. I mean, really, I got to know, just kind of have someone that was more developed into the sport, obviously, around. So I got to learn much more early about everything uh, triathlon. It's definitely nice to yeah, have someone that takes interest into what I do. All the top are all the trophies. You can see around, then you see all the pictures, frames with posters, uh, all the major races, all the different world uh, championships. So I started the sport in 27, and I stopped the sport at 31, and I would turn pro at 30. So in a certain way, I had a lot of things that I still wanted to do and I couldn't do. And it just happened that destiny, you know, gave me a son. Yeah, in a certain way, has ingrained in himself, you know, the same passion that is way beyond my footsteps. Now he's way ahead, but in a certain way, I'm I'm living a part of my life, which is the triathlon part of my life. I'm living that, or, or in a certain way, reliving that through him. I had a very happy childhood. I, a lot of things were around sports. My dad loved, always loved sports. My mom obviously encouraged it too. And living here is absolutely awesome for developing that side of me. South of France and just around this house, we just have a lot of nature and the pool and with my parents pushing me to do it and the surroundings really just kind of made me who I am. Usually when, when you're growing up in this type of environment, you become more lazy than other things because you basically uh, consider the, that you have it all. You know, but since uh, the beginning, I told him, you have to earn everything you have here. And I will, I will never help you if you don't help yourself uh, uh, first. And uh, so really understood that since the beginning. And, and of course, he had uh, certainly a better environment, a better upbringing than many people, but he never took anything for granted. But I made sure that he understood that. And he became, uh, you know, the, the fantastic person he is now not only a professional triathlete in the top of his sport, but also a great, uh, a great uh, human being. So, which in certain ways is maybe the most important thing. Yeah, well, so I was born in the US and then just like three weeks later and then removed back here. I grew up here till I was 19, till I went to college in Boulder. I think my first race ever was here. I was maybe five years old and the, they had this run race here every summer and it starts right down here. The gun shot was so loud that I never started the race and I just was on the start line crying. <laughs> it's pretty funny. You know, as a child, he was um, always very calm. And she used to play for hours on end, all alone, you know. No problem, he was just the way he is. I think that's the way he was born. We were kind of referring to him as, as Socrates. He was 14, 15, 16, because he was very zen. That's why I think he has a very good character for triathlon, because 
triathlon is really a sport where you, you can face many incidents during the race that can stress you out. My parents, when I was young, always kind of told me, yeah, I had just this kind of common collected and I just think about things in a slightly different way and don't get uh, very worked up over things. You always see these people that have all sorts of excuses after every race, and I feel like I'm one of those athletes that it's exactly the opposite. I think if my motivation was, were not to be basically world champion every time I would compete in a world championship, the consequences would have been a bit different in, in the life of the family because the demanding aspects would have been different. Since uh, I wanted to be always at that level, it has consequences for everybody. Rudy growing up saw that and kind of took for him about maybe, you know, 80% of it, and the rest uh, he developed it on his own. We are extremely similar up to 90%, and then there is a 10% where we're very different. <laughs> A girlfriend who gave it to me, she read it and wanted me to read it. She doesn't want me to have too big of an ego. So <laughs> yeah, it's pretty interesting just to pretty much stay humble and keep on doing what you love without chasing external motivations. Well, he said, you know, during the world championship race in, um, in Nice in uh, 2019, he said what really spurred him on also was the, you know, the people along the roads were shouting out his name. And so obviously that's, that's really cool. That's really nice. He is humble. I mean, he, he still thinks, uh, which in a way is true, that he hasn't really accomplished anything in the sport yet. So, you know, he's ready to grow and ready to move on and, and do his thing. 20 years of sports. <laughs> I've found that sometimes success feels empty. So I've won races that I've kind of dreamt of winning. But I have that a, a, a weird feeling of emptiness after the race. It's like, almost like, oh, I did it, okay. And it's almost like I want to feel more emotions. And you know, it's just how we are as athletes. We're never really satisfied with our level. We always see these amazing feats in the individual sports and we'll never get to that level of being a triathlete, obviously. So it's almost we're doomed to never be happy, you know? <laughs> I found out that I lost the number one U.S. spa just at home watching uh, the PTO stats after St. George. Sam Long is number one U.S. now and he earned it by racing at a very high level that I wasn't able to race well. And he got a lot of points and he passed me. It's on me to race better if I want to be number one. I think the sport of triathlon has evolved quite a bit uh, since my dad race, and especially now with the arrival of the PTO, that can really take triathlon to the next step. And with events like Collins Cup. Collins Cup is the marquee event of the professional triathletes organization that's trying to bring triathlon to the next level, essentially. Jan Frodeno is the best athlete in Team Europe. We have the Australians, we have Lionel Sanders in Team International. The best head-to-head -head you can be in is probably these two athletes I just mentioned. And I think it would be interesting for me because Jan would swim faster than Lionel. I would be either with Jan or slightly behind, but I'd be in front of Lionel. So we'd have this dynamic where Jan is ahead, I'm pretty close, and Lionel's trying to catch up. As an athlete, if I could represent the U.S. in the Collins Cup, it would just be an opportunity for me to show that American triathlon is one of the best in the world.
My message to anyone who doubts us would be that just never underestimates the Americans. Americans always rise to the occasion. The inaugural Collins Cup. You do not want to miss this.